Stand up for the word of God. Today is scripture from the Old Testament. Numbers chapter 14, verse 11. Let's all read the word of God slowly. Hi, Dina. Hi. Okay. The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long would they refuse to believe in me, in spite of all the signs I have performed among them? Amen. So ever since January, we've been learning about God's power to change us. Today's our third week. Are you excited? Yeah. I'm excited. Because I want all of you to change. I want all of you to be more Christ-like in the year 2020. Okay? We have learned that the word, very word Christian is a breakdown of the word Christ and Chun. Christian, people who belong to Christ, people who want to resemble Christ. That if you don't want to be like Christ, you are actually not a Christian. You cannot be a Christian by definition. We have learned that. First step we learned about how to change, how to tap into God's power to change us, is that we have to first desire the change. You cannot desire heaven without desiring Christ. You cannot be in heaven without being like Christ. Agree? Amen? You cannot say yes to heaven and say no to Christ. Understand? Desire is the number one thing you need if you want to change. And then we learned last week, second week, that we have to utilize the tools that God gave us. We have to utilize the Word of God. So that it can convict us of the things that we need to change in our lives. And learn what God's instructions for me and you, all of us are. We learn that we have to utilize prayer. So that we can confess our sins, repent, and confess that we need to depend on God. We learn this. We cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it with our own power. We are weak. The people who sit in here think, I am strong, trust me, you're weaker than anybody else. Just because you think you can do it by yourself. All of us need to depend on God. And you can't depend on God if you don't pray. Because the prayer is a method we go to God to depend on Him. And third thing we learned was that we need to rely on the Holy Spirit because He's the only one who empowers us. So... When you summarize the tools that God gave us, you cannot change without spending time with God in your daily quiet time. You cannot change if you don't spend time with God in the Word of God, in your prayer, in the Holy Spirit. Basically, in your quiet time. The quiet time has to be your lifestyle. Today is step three. Part three says what? Everybody, let's read together. Believing, <laughs> believing that God will change you. We must believe that God's power can and will change us. But more than that, we must believe that the change will make us happier. We must believe that God 
can and will change us we believe that the change will make us happier. How many of you think you'll be happier if you are more Christ-like? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. How many of you think you'll be happier if you're more world-like? Thank you for this word. <laughs> What kind of a God do you believe in? The God that Minis Abednego is believing in. What kind of God is he? The God that she believes in. What kind of God is he? Do you believe that God knows what will make you happy? Not please? Do you think God knows what will make you happy? Do you believe that God loves you and wants the best for you? Everybody kind of knows that. Do you believe that God has the power to change you? Yeah. Well, if you truly believe and trust that God can make you happy, that God wants to make you happy, that God wants your happiness and knows what it takes to make you happy and has the power to make you happy, <coughs> Shouldn't you do what God says? Right? If you believe that God wants you to be happy, and He knows what it takes to make you happy, and He has the power to do it, wouldn't you do what He says? So, are you doing what God is telling you? Are you meditating on the Word of God? Do you get up 30 minutes earlier so that you can read a chapter of His Word and meditate on His Word before you start the day so that you can carry that message throughout the entire day and live in the presence of God that you could meditate, regurgitate. The Greek word that is like the cow, you know, you chew something and you swallow it and you kind of throw it up back in your mouth and try it kind of chew it some more, back in, and you chew it, and you, they do that four times. That's meditation. You read the Word of God. Itan bogo. And then what do you do? You regurgitate. Meditate on it some more. Throughout the day, regurgitate it again. Do you meditate on God's Word? Number two, are you praying? Do you get up in the morning before you start the, the day, before you go to school, and at least say, Good morning, God. Good morning, God. I'm here. Today is going to be a great day because what? Today is another day with you. Or do you get up, oh, I don't want to go to school. Oh, today is going to be terrible. I have tested. Do you start off the day already depressed? Do you go to God intermittently during the day? During lunchtime? During recess? On your way home? Are you continually in prayer with God? Do you go to God at night and ask for forgiveness for the things you have done that you know you shouldn't have done? For things you have said that you shouldn't have said? Things you have thought that you shouldn't have thought? Things that you imagined that you shouldn't have imagined. Things that you should have done that you did not do. The love that you should have given, the care you should have given, that you just overlooked and said somebody else would take care of it. Do you go to night, God at night, and confess your sins? Are you dying to yourself? Are you saying no to what you want for yourself and saying yes to what God wants for you? Are you doing all the things that God is instructing you? If you are not saying yes, why not? What's wrong? You know that God loves you. That he wants the best for you. He knows what's going to make you happy. You believe all this stuff and you trust God to make it happen. 
then how come you're not doing it? How come you don't trust him enough to fulfill everything that he's telling you to do? I understand you because I was the same way, and I am still struggling to do exactly what God said. As I live, I think there's two reasons why. Everybody's different in here. Whether you're a young kid or an old person, everybody's struggling in here, right? One of the reasons is this, you really don't believe in God. You sit here and you don't do anything that God is telling you, you just do whatever you want. <coughs> Number one, first reason is, you actually don't really believe in God. Or more commonly, you don't believe that obeying God will make you happy. You say it with your mouth, Oh, yeah, if I do what God wants, it's going to make me happy. But truly in my heart, you think, if I do what God is telling me, I'm not going to be happy. You truly don't believe God. That if you treasure God, you don't need anything else. You may say that, but the first group don't actually believe that. Number two. Because we are indifferent to God. We really don't care. We really don't care about who God is. We really don't care about sin and salvation. We really don't care about repenting or being born again. We really don't care about the truth. We kind of care about heaven and hell. Because we don't want to go to hell. But we think we're just too young. We have enough years. I really don't want to think. Are you in any of these two groups of people? The first group that think that I really don't believe that if I follow God, I'm really going to be happy. Or are you happen to be the second group that just says, you know, I really don't care. You know, I know everything in my head. I know everything. But, you know, I really don't care about sin, repenting, and all of that stuff right now. Why do you, for these people, why do you think they don't care? Why do you think people don't care? You know what? You know what I think? I think they really actually do care. They just don't know that they care. People don't know, they don't realize, because their feelings overshadow their knowledge of the truth. 사람은 감정이 있어. People have feelings and emotions. And we're living in society where our feelings are very important to us. We don't want to get our feelings hurt. We don't want to hurt somebody else's feeling. We know something, but we ask us, how do I feel about that? We put more importance <coughs> in our feeling. We put more value in our feeling whether consciously or unconsciously, we trust our feelings more than we trust God and the truth. Or rather, we value being honest to our feelings more than obeying God's word. We value our feelings tremendously. James, is your feelings important to us, to, to you? Jenna, is your feeling important to you? Is it more important than the truth, the word of God, the God? Thank you, James. In summary, your sin nature has taken your thoughts, your actions, your life hostage. You know, but you really don't know if you know. What I mean? Do you know what I mean? I know in my head. But... When I live, I really don't know if I really know. You believe, but you really don't remember what you believe. I believe, I know what I believe, but throughout the day, I forget about what I'm believing. What do I believe? You make commitments to God. I'm going to do my QT. I'm going to read the Word of God. I'm going to pray. You make commitments to God. I'm not going to 
do those sins anymore that's been controlling me. I'm not going to be hateful. I'm going to be loving. You make commitments, but you forget what you committed to. You live your days and you forget. Did I make a commitment to God? What did I make commitments for? I want to ask each and every one of you the title of today's message. Do you believe that God's power can and will change you? Amen? Do you believe that God has power to really change you and that change will actually make you happy? If you believe, and if you truly want to believe, have your belief allow God to truly change and transform your life, you must be disciplined to do the following, okay? If you really want to believe, because you know you believe, you believe what you really want to believe, that you have to do two things. You have to be disciplined to do two things. Number one, <clears throat> Be aware of your feelings. Remind yourself that you believe the Almighty God to be good, loving, and desirable. You have to believe. You have to talk to yourself. Whenever you don't think about it, you have to say, June, stop. You believe that. Don't forget that. You believe that. You make that commitment to God. You have to be disciplined. To bring that back, 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 that belief back into your heart, okay? Number two, tell yourself and discipline yourself to overcome your feelings and know for a fact that you want to change because being changed to be more like Christ will truly make you happy, to truly satisfy you, to make you complete of a person. You know that. You have to remind you of yourself of that. Can you do that two disciplines? Yonu, this week, can you try to do those two disciplines? One, I do believe it. Remind yourself what you believe. I do believe that God can make me happy by changing me. And number two, make yourself, discipline yourself. I want to conclude today with what Jesus said. John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus says this, If you abide in my word, and are truly my disciple, and you will know the truth, and what? The truth will set you free. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. So if you don't abide in my word, what? You're not my disciples. If you truly abide in my word, you are my disciple, and you will know the truth, and truth will set you free. It will set you free from your feelings. It will set you free from your bias. It will set you free from your sin nature. It will make you free. So you could believe what you really want to believe, that you could really make a commitment to what you really want to, commitment, to make a commitment, and really change, and have God power you, empower you. So how do you abide in this word? We're back to the same conclusion every week almost. You have to do your daily cues. How many of you raise your hand in your heart? <laughs> the QT this week. I mean, really try. I believe that if I do this, it's God's gonna make me happier. I'm gonna commit to this, and I'm gonna do it, and you did it. How many of you did that this week? In your heart, raise your hand. And I'm hoping a lot of people will raise your hand. Because if you raise your hand, hopefully it's going to show on your face. Because you're going to have a more big smile. You'll be happier right now. Because God has fulfilled His promise to make you change this week and make you happier. You have to be serious about your quiet time. You have to be serious about your prayer. If you believe God could change your life, give you power, why don't you go to Him in prayer? Remind yourself that you really believe God. That He's good. And by being in His presence, by spending time with Him, 
that God's going to fulfill it. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We want to be your true disciples, Lord. We want to truly believe you, Lord. We want to abide in your word in our daily quiet time, in the word, in our prayer, and depending on the Holy Spirit, Lord. I pray that you would just empower all of us, Lord. First of all, remind us, and help, second of all, help us to really believe in you. Be with every one of us here throughout this whole week that we can live in your word. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Thank you.